Greetings once again in the name of the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the one, the true one, the holy one of Israel. We come together today, this will be a, a communion day. So stop the uh, podcast, get your cup, prepare to break bread. Oh, it's been a while, and not without good reason. And the reason is because, I suppose, there were just a lot of things in my own life for me to straighten out. And the Bible says, at least Paul says, (laughs) the Bible, that a man should should be worthy of the cup, not drink unworthily, in other words, not commune unworthily, but let a man examine himself, he said. And I think I've had time to do that. And where I fall in the whole thing is my assessment of myself is I'm an embattled servant warrior in this fight and have been struggling with my own bondage issues of unworthiness which perhaps is my own thing that I put on myself, I may be too hard on myself. Uh, shame, guilt, a feeling of not doing anything well. And a lot of this is, is um, exteriorly put on me. It was part of the curse of whatever my life would be. I mean, I think every life is cursed to be here in this situation, right, the curse of Adam, the curse of the fall. So mine is particularly that. And I think as I examine myself, I realize, oh, gee, half the stuff I'm beating myself up for isn't even mine. But people want to layer it on you. And perhaps I haven't been strong enough to fight back. And mind you, I seem to be pretty whole, you know, I guess, relatively speaking. Some of mine say, well, you're not in such bad shape as that. I said, no one said anything about being in bad shape. What I said is detailed, uh, I gave you a detailed account of my self-examination. Perhaps it disturbs something in you. So you must tell me it's not that bad so that you will feel better about yourself because everything's a projection. Well, I tried to rest up. Today, Shabbat Shalom. This is the Sabbath. This is the day of rest. So we will rest in the Lord. Now, I've... Yes, it may have taken me a while to examine myself, but I feel that I was looking back at the scripture and um, this one in particular, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 29. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord But let a man examine himself so that he eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Well, we certainly don't want to do that. And so when there's a check in my spirit, you know, I mean, I I can't schedule anything. Here we are today. I bet you didn't focus on that scripture too much when you were taking communion in the church. 
No, you just line up and go for it, right? And you Catholics, Eucharist, there's no self-examination. <laughs> You're just lining up and doing it almost reflexively. But I think Paul puts into perspective, we don't just come to the cup uh, willy-nilly. No. You examine yourself, you repent, you're sorry, you're grateful for the good things, and then you come to the cup. Without the self-examination, right? a lot of people blend repentance and communion. They don't want to just appear with the Lord and break bread with the Lord unworthily, without thought. I think what Paul is saying here, since he's not qualifying what examining himself means, it just means be self-conscious and aware that you're approaching the Lord here. You don't just come as an everyday thing. Oh, do it as often as you like in remembrance of me, absolutely. But he is still approaching God. I mean, who could look upon God? None of us can. We would burn up. So we approach in awe. Let us examine ourselves. I can't tell you when these are... No, there's, I'm not giving an excuse. I didn't examine myself, therefore I didn't have communion for a while. No, I didn't look at it that way. This is what's going on today. I don't know about yesterday. I don't care. Okay. There is no yesterday for me. Okay. Let a man examine himself, so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. Right. So in taking the... the bread and the cup. We examine ourselves. We stand fairly naked before the Lord, realize that we can hold nothing back. Now, Jesus is the living bread that came from heaven. If any man eats this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. John six thirty three. So the bread is the body and the wine, the blood. Of course, symbolically, it's not like you're repeating a human sacrifice. No, you are symbolically taking the bread of life, the blood of Christ, Acknowledging that you live because of him. Otherwise, everything is dead. None of us can do it on our own. We cannot summon the righteousness because as soon as we do, we fall. We make a mistake. We fall. But in him there is no imperfection, there's only righteousness, there's only joy, there's only the pure spirit. Only in him, abiding in him, can we, do we then attain life. As long as we stick to the vine, we have life. The fruit has life. When we fall from the vine, we have nothing. So let this communion, this breaking of bread together, be an acknowledgement 
that because he lives, we live. The bread is life. The blood is the sacrifice, the atonement for all mankind so that we may live in him right now. I live. They don't live. I live. And why do I live? I live in the eternal realm because of Christ, because of Jesus, because of God, because of redemption, because though I may not deserve it, I can't see anything that I would merit my getting a break here. Exactly. I haven't been perfect. But because of him, I'm acquitted of my crime and the doorway to the tree of life, the blocking, the cherub, the flaming sword, it's removed thanks to the blood. And thanks to Jesus, which is life, the bread, which is also the spirit that animates the world. But unless one is born of the spirit, of the actual spirit of God, which is pure overcoming of all things, well, one has no life. This is where the term born again came, the idea of being born again in the eternal spirit through Jesus Christ. <laughs> Because of that, you see, we live now. Oh, you know, it, it, some of us display our freedom. What is freedom? No anxiety. A fearlessness. Not afraid of death. Not afraid of any man. No. Not living in fear. But rather victoriously having overcome the world because he overcame the world right now. There just isn't anything that cannot be done by one in the body of Christ. All things are possible through the Lord. Any dream, any thought, anything fulfilled, any bucket list is of course doable. Any new adventure, I see that there's new adventures awaiting you. Someone's going to take a new adventure. By all means, do it. Be strengthened by this communion. Let this thing be the, the kicking off, the bon voyage of a new journey. Trying something new at 65 years old. Absolutely, what's wrong with that? Abraham was older than you. And Abraham should be our model for new journeys, <laughs> I would think. But I will say this, that um, that the whole idea of communion was supposed to be, I mean, it's at once casual. There you are around your table. And it happens among the brethren around the table. It doesn't have to be a stained glass church. I think my favorite is kind of the same as the Last Supper, where you've had your, your meal, you've, you're sharing in the Lord, you've done your prayer, and you break bread in communion in remembrance of him. It's almost like he is now taking the place of Elijah, which of course is what he does in the world. Right, remember? 
he takes the seat of Elijah, but that's the final seat. That's the throne of heaven at your dinner table. <laughs> so that's why I think a man must examine himself. I'm, I'm so glad Paul put a little check there to write. Obviously what he's addressing is just people think there's magic in the communion and so they flock to it to like a magic cure, like a washing clean, like a free, a free pass. And he's saying, nah, not so fast. You're approaching the Lord here. And yes, when Jesus was here with the brethren, yes, right around that table. That's right. Right around that table. Meaning it should be as common as, and as you like. Whenever the spirit overcomes, rather overtakes or rather overwhelms, whenever the spirit is present, of course, and there's a need, by all means, break this bread and have this wine as often as you like in remembrance of him, but in the presence of him. Remember this, remembrance is presence. Because presence is all we have. We don't have the past. We just have now. So I think I'm going to cut it off there. I'm going to say I'm breaking my bread here off of my piece of bread. I have it. If you have your bread, partake. And if you have your wine, whatever you have, this is the blood. Pour it out that the world might live. The breach healed. Eternal life. The lifeblood of the Spirit. here today. And he will. But rather than focusing, well, amen. And I receive and give out prayer and receive yours in thanks. And if you care to continue this at your tables include. It doesn't matter if you do it five times a day, folks. Whatever is going to put you in the presence of the Lord, that's what it's all about. This symbolically represents the world and life. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the overcoming of the curse of Adam, the restoration of the breach, all of those things combined in the single act of remembrance of me is him and he takes over and in him of course there's no disappointment but in the spirit there's only joy God is a spirit must be worshipped in spirit and in truth I believe we have spoken the truth here today so now music laughter Playing, running, jumping, energy. Because in so doing, you celebrate the thing God created. He created you to, to, to not just be hunkered down and pushed down your face in the mud all day. Every day. Begging for a little relief. That's not life. And that's not what God created. <laughs> <laughs> 